Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to give the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One day a surgeon performed an operation on an ill-tempered lady. She was upward in years and was about a negative as a person as anyone could be. The woman came through the surgery with flying colors despite all her dire predictions of what would happen. She became quite agitated when the doctor told her that in accordance with the rules of the hospital, she'd have to walk for 10 minutes the same day of her surgery and would most likely have to be dismissed from the hospital within a week due to insurance regulations. Well, she had her 10 minute walk that first day, teetering under her own steam and mumbling under her breath the whole time. She was outright angry when the doctor told her that her walk would have to lengthen to 15 minutes the next day. Well, she reluctantly did it. And by the time she went home, she was stomping all over that hospital. Later, her family paid the doctor a compliment for the wonderful job that he did and told him that he had accomplished nothing short of a miracle. Nonsense, he said. It was a routine operation. Oh, it's not the operation we're marveling over, said her grandson. It's her walking. Grandma hasn't taken a step in six years. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful story. Grandma hasn't taken a step in six years. But she was walking now. Why? Because her doctor told her that she had to walk, and she conceded to him. It's amazing what faith one places in a doctor or a teacher, or a paramedic, or, or fireman, for example, and what one will do when they've placed their faith in him or her. It's amazing the things that you can accomplish in life if you simply have faith in someone or something. Did you know that there are only two people in the Bible that were praised by Jesus as having great faith? And here is what is remarkable. Both of these individuals, praised by Jesus for their great faith, were Gentiles. One of them with great faith was the Roman centurion in the town of Capernaum. You remember the story, I'm sure. The centurion's servant, whom he highly valued, was sick and about to die. In the Gospel of Luke, the centurion sent some Jewish elders to Jesus, asking him to come and to heal his servant. And when he came to Jesus... He, they, they earnestly pleaded with him, this man deserves to have you do this, they said, because he loves our nation and he has built our synagogue. So Jesus agreed to go and he went with them to the centurion's home. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent Jesus a message. Lord, don't trouble yourself for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. And do you remember what happens next? When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and turned to the crowd. He said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. When the centurion's friends returned to the house, they found that the servant had been healed. The Roman centurion was one of the two people Jesus praised for great faith. The other was the persistent Canaanite woman in today's lesson. 
Her story is even more remarkable than in Centurion's because Matthew tells us that leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre in Sidon. Tyre and Sidon lay outside the land of Palestine, uh, north to Galilee. It was a land occupied by people of varying religions. And none of these religions were more detestable to the Jews than the Canaanite religion. So it is significant that Matthew, writing primarily for a Jewish audience, reports that a Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to Jesus and was crying out to him, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter's demon possessed and she's suffering terribly. Certainly, it was nothing new for someone to come to Jesus crying out for healing, either for themselves or for someone they loved. News was traveling fast about Jesus' ability to heal, but a Canaanite? They were about as low as it gets as far as the Jews were concerned. The Canaanites were, were looked upon by the Jews as immoral people. In fact, in the time of Joshua, God had commanded the army of Israel to completely destroy the Canaanite people. Now, Israel did not fully obey God's order, and some of the Canaanites survived the invasion. This woman was their descendant. So for a Canaanite woman to be called a person of great faith was an amazing development. But her daughter, her daughter was suffering. And what mother out there wouldn't move heaven and earth to do anything possible to help her suffering child? And this mother believed that there was someone who might be able to help her. And his name was Jesus. Now, she knew that he was Jewish, and she wasn't. But if he could help her daughter, that's all that mattered to her. And so she came to where Jesus was, and she cries out to him, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter's demon-possessed and suffering terribly. At this point, something happens that's quite troubling to many of us. <laughs> Matthew tells us that Jesus did not answer a word. The woman here, she's in absolute distress. She cries to Jesus for help, and all she gets is silence. Maybe some of you can relate. Maybe some of you feel that that's all that you've received as of late. Theologians have written profusely about the silence of God. If you have ever been confronted by a great challenge in your life, perhaps you've also experienced what seemed to be silence. You've brought your need to Jesus, and you've prayed with all your heart and soul, and the silence seems to be deafening. Where is God? My son or daughter is suffering. Why won't God hear me? I am going through some, some great turmoil or distress in my life, and why is it it seems like God is not answering my prayer? Many of us, so many of us have experienced this in life. Many of the most notable people in the Bible were confronted with the silence of God. Job lost his family. He lost his health. He lost the confidence of his wife, lost all of his wealth. Few people ever suffered like Job. But when Job asked God why, God didn't speak until he did. Before Job, there was Abraham. Abraham was 100 years old before his firstborn son. For many years, Abraham wondered not why, but when. When will I have a son? But God was silent until he wasn't. The poor Canaanite woman now, she, she cries out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. And Jesus said not a word. There are some who believe that this woman was actually encouraged by Jesus' silence. At least he didn't immediately dismiss her, which is what most rabbis or Pharisees would have been expected to do. However, this woman's constant pleading was, it was irritating to the disciples. They came to the master and they urged him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. Have you ever noticed that Jesus never sends anybody away? 
It doesn't matter their ethnicity or their gender or even their religion in this case. He never turns anyone away when they come to him. Maybe, maybe he was silent for dramatic effect. Because what's about to happen is certainly eye-opening. First, when he breaks his silence, he says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. I believe what he's saying is that he was bringing a new thing, and that thing is to first come through the Jewish people, God's chosen people. But now, the Canaanite woman comes directly before him. She kneels before him. She is desperate with a crushing load of worry for her daughter. She pleads, Lord, help me. Can you see her? Can you hear the desperation in her voice? Now Jesus makes a reply that has puzzled scholars for 2,000 years. Jesus replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Was Jesus calling this woman a dog? It sure sounds that way. However, it may not seem, or it may not have been as harsh as it sounds in the English. Scholars tell us that the word he used for dog was the common word for, say, a puppy or a beloved household pet. It still sounds harsh to us. It's certainly not a compliment. But she wasn't offended. Yes, Lord, she said. But even dogs eat the crumbs that fall under the master's table. I don't know if this happened, but I can almost see a smile spread across Jesus' face. He has to be impressed with her persistence. He must even be amused a little at her gall. This Canaanite woman whom he had just referenced as a dog, or a puppy really, quips back to him rather brilliantly. And notice something else here. She knows who Jesus is. She calls him Lord. So maybe that reference to her as a dog, maybe just maybe it was a test of her faith, a test of her resilience. Or maybe he had a grin on his face and a, a glimmer in his eye as they shared a knowing glance. Remember, all of those around them were in fact Jews, and to the Jews she was looked down upon in that way. But he was no ordinary Jew. He's God in the flesh of a Jewish man, and he's the same one who said, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. He's the same one who speaks the words, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever shall believe in Him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. But here, we have this Canaanite woman refute back to Him, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. <laughs> Speaking of dogs, there's a delightful story about a man and his family pet when he was growing up. <laughs> He says the dog's name was Spike, and he said that his dad always bragged on how good Spike was. Spike would never take any food that he hadn't first been given. One night, dad brought home some freshly ground meat along with a few generic grocery items in a paper sack. <laughs> you remember when our groceries would come in paper sacks? My family used to take those little bags and, and, and we'd put them in the trash can if we ran out of trash bags and we used those for a day or so. But I digress. Dad asked his teenage son to bring this grocery bag in. And the teenager was in a hurry to head out himself so he comes in with the sack and he lays it on the floor but then he forgot about it. And later when his parents come downstairs they find Spike laying over in the corner but the meat was still intact. Spike hadn't touched it. Spike was such a good dog, he says. You could leave treats on the coffee table and never have to worry about Spike getting into them. However, he wasn't perfect. One Christmas, he says, his father was standing in the kitchen looking over the, the half wall that separated the kitchen from the living room. 
And as he watched, Spike came into the living room and carefully looked around to make sure that he wasn't being watched. And then very deliberately, Spike stuck his nose in the bowl of chocolates lying there on the table. He rooted around these unwrapped chocolates until he found the one that he liked. He took it up in his mouth and then he dropped it onto the floor under the table. <laughs> he looked around again to be sure no one was watching. Then he picked it up and ate it, leaving all the rest. Recalling those days and that family pet, he then said these profound words. Our dog was not one of the children, but he was a member of the family. And as such, he had certain privileges. And one of those privileges were the crumbs that fell from the table. And then he added, grace means we get the crumbs from the table. This woman understood that she was not a part of the community to which Christ was sent, but she knew that she still had a place in God's household. And what was Jesus' response to this Canaanite woman? Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. You have to love this woman. It makes no difference to her that she wasn't one of them or that Jesus initially ignores her, or so it seemed, or that the disciples were annoyed with her and wished her away. She had a need, and she knew where to take that need, and she knelt before Jesus, and she said, Lord, help me. It no longer mattered what her background was, and it makes no difference what our background is what school we attended, or what color our skin is, or what our socioeconomic status is. We are God's children, and we trust in God. And when we trust in God, miracles do still happen. Even healings take place still today, in this life or the next. Yes, physical healings do still occur. I've seen it happen. But more importantly than that are the spiritual healings that occur. And the promise that because of that, we will all be healed and spend eternity in through the presence of our loving Father. This Canaanite woman was considered an outcast by the religious people of her time. Still, Jesus responded to her need. It may be that there was someone who is hearing this today who feels estranged from God for some reason. Maybe you've been hurt or rejected or betrayed. Maybe you're ill physically or emotionally. Or maybe you've given in a temptation and the weight of your mistake has caused a wall to be erected in your own mind that makes you feel like a stranger to God. The Canaanite woman was part of a despised people, but that did not keep her from seeking Jesus and receiving God's mercy. Won't you bring your hurt, your need, your urgent plea to Jesus? Won't you allow Him to bring healing to the thing that is ailing you? What's troubling you? What's the one thing you need to bring to the feet of Jesus today? And like that Canaanite woman, plead, Lord, help me. Praise be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, our God, we come before you. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. You are a good and merciful God and you never turn us away. Lord, whatever that may be upon our heart, whatever hindrances that we may be experienced, whatever wall has been erected, Lord, we ask that you would help to break it down. Lord, we ask for your healing mercy, for your grace to be extended in our lives as we seek to honor and worship you and follow you. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.